Let's circle back to our top story. Canberra has announced its intention to strengthen ties with Southeast Asia. Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese made the remarks during a visit to Indonesia, his first bilateral visit since being elected. Now, he's also pledged stronger cooperation with Jakarta on trade, security and climate change. Ian Wilson, senior lecturer of international politics and security studies at Murdoch University, joins us live now for more on this. Uh, let's start off with that aid package, a multi-million dollar one to aid Indonesia and other ASEAN nations. Scott Morrison made similar gestures, mm -hmm. though. There is a lot to gain for Australia to deepen its ties with one of the world's five largest economies. What's in it for Australia uh, to continue this outreach of aid, Mr. Wilson? Sure. Well, I mean, there are some obvious responses to that, that Indonesia is Australia's nearest neighbour. Uh, it's a large country, uh, dwarfing Australia with 270 million uh, people. And I, I think if we reflect on the more recent history of the relationship, uh, we, of course, had a recent change of government uh, in Australia from nearly 10 years of Liberal National Government to uh, now a Labor government. Uh, and I, I think in many respects, some of the things we've seen announced today from Prime Minister Albanese are really not new things, but trying to regain ground that's been lost over the last year, or nine years, I should say, where there's been less sort of substantive investment in the relationship. So the aid package, I think, will be, uh, you know, welcomed, uh, certainly uh, in the region. But it also has to be seen in the context where we've seen significant cuts uh, to uh, aid and development uh, to the region over the last decade. So um, rather than something that's sort of new and expansive, I think we're sort of really seeing a regaining of ground that, that's been lost over the, the past few years. Well, as you say, Mr Wilson, Mr Albanese, he, his, he and his team, they've spent the past five, nine years in opposition. What foreign policy experience mm -hmm. uh, can they truly bring to Indonesia-Australia relations that will be meaningful, perhaps different from what Scott Morrison uh, and, and other administrations before had brought? Well, I mean, that's, that's an interesting question. Uh, and, you know, in one respect, we're going to have to see what happens. But, there are, you know, there are promising signs uh, within uh, the Cabinet that's been announced uh, by the Prime Minister. There are a number of uh, senior government members who have significant uh, interest and long-term uh, knowledge of the region, including the new foreign minister, Penny Wong, uh, who has a heritage, a Malaysian heritage, and so is very familiar with the region and, and takes it uh, seriously. So I, I think, you know, in that respect, uh, there's a, a lot of promise. I mean, it's, it's almost a cliché uh, when talking about Indonesia Australia relations, where there's an emphasis put on people-to-people -people ties and the importance of those ties. Uh, what that means in practice, though, has often been uh, unclear. And certainly, I think, from the Australian side, uh, there was uh, yeah, uh, a lot of rejoicing even today where we saw a, a commitment to reinvest in the Indonesian language, for example. Indonesian language programs have been significantly cut over the past few years. And that we can see a, a reinvestment in the kind of uh, infrastructure and resources that are really necessary, certainly from Australia's side, uh, for us to be able to better understand, and that's fundamental to be better engaging more substantively with the region. The other side to that, uh, of course, is from Indonesia's side, and in many respects, I think, there's often a misunderstanding in Australia that we're perhaps less important to Indonesia than we might like to think we are. Yeah, that, but certainly, uh, I think... Yeah, that certainly may be the perception, yes. Mr Wilson. But Indonesia is also one of, of several Asian countries that has expressed concerns about the AUKUS Pact, as an example. Do you think Mr Albanese is going to sidestep yes. that issue of Indonesia's preference for a non-aligned position when it comes to contests between superpowers, uh, China and the United States? I think we'll at the very least see a far less confrontational approach uh, and sort of one of the defining features of the, the previous Australian administration was uh, a very um, full frontal, often rhetorically aggressive uh, stance when it came to engagement with China. I think what was significant today in the Prime Minister's speech was that there was no overt mention uh, of this and I thought that really suggested that we'll be seeing a more silent uh, yeah, back doors kind of uh, approach, uh, behind closed doors approach to, the, to security 
uh, discussions. And there was also, I think, a significant reference to basically being uh, in support of the Asian ASEAN vision for the region. And of course, the ASEAN vision more broadly is to not see the region become a militarised space of contestation between uh, superpowers. So I, I think in that respect, it'll be tricky for our, uh, the new Prime Minister. He, we have uh, deep engagements with the United States, uh, of course, through AUKUS, but longer standing uh, agreements. But I think there is a real uh, desire to have a refreshed engagement with the region and with ourselves as a part of the region, uh, mm. rather than sort of always looking to the north, so to speak, right. uh, for our security uh, agreements and arra right. arrangements. Uh, yeah. Certainly, it'll be a tricky one for Mr Albanese, but we'll see what he can pull out of the bag on this trip. Mr Wilson, thank you very much for that. Ian Wilson there from Murdoch University.